to this lesson. Uh, in this lesson we are looking at factoring and we're going to start with the most common factoring and that is the common factor. But before we naturally get there, let's actually just look at what is factoring exactly. Well, factoring basically, factoring or factorizing, however you want to say it, factorizing is the opposite of simplifying. Okay, opposite of simplifying okay so in simplifying we want to multiply things together and we want to uh, get rid of brackets and uh, factorizing actually just the opposite of that but probably a better uh, definition would be uh, to factorize a number to factorize a number okay a number okay we write it as the product the product of two numbers okay we write it as the product of two numbers so for example uh, if I factorize the number 8 8 can be 2 times 4 to factorize mean to write it as the product of two numbers so 8 can be 2 times 4 um, I shouldn't actually say two numbers let's say it's just the product our of numbers it can be many so for example 8 can also be 2 times 2 times 2 and we've looked at the uh, the exponent way of writing products and that is 2 to the power of 3 I apologize 2 to the power of 3 would give me 8 okay that is to factorize a number now whenever a number like 7 can only be written as the product of 1 and itself Okay, that's the only way of factorizing it. It's called the prime factor. Okay, uh, we've already looked at this. So seven is a prime factor because there's no way of writing it other than one times itself. Okay, so uh, we are, however, busy with algebra. So to factorize, to factorize an algebraic. Now this shouldn't be an number, a number. To factorize an algebraic expression, okay, we write it as the product of algebraic expression of algebraic expressions okay so same idea the only thing is now it is not just numbers that we are multiplying together because the aim is to actually get a certain value so let me actually do this opposite way around let's say I had two a number that is multiplying an algebraic expression now when I multiply an algebraic expression I must put it in brackets and that is to show that I'm multiplying everything with a 2. Now, this was called the distributive property. Okay. And in the end, we got 2 times x is 2x and 2 times 3 is 6. So, in other words, if I were to be given 2x plus 6 and I'm asked to factorize it it means I must write it as the product of algebraic expressions now just so that you know numbers are also algebraic expressions a number by itself is just a constant term okay so to write this as a product of two things I saw oh this was two times that expression two times x plus 3 Okay, now this is called, this way of factorizing is called taking out a common factor. And let me show you just why it's called that. If I were to break up every term in its factors, prime factors, okay, this is what I'll get. I'll have 2 times x, okay, that's the first term. And then 6, I'll have 2 times 3. I've broken it up and written each term in terms of factors. So I did factorizing but just for every term. Okay, writing it as the product of its simplest factors. Now what I can see is that okay both of these terms have a 2 in it and that is why since both have a 2 in it we call it 
the common factor. Okay, it is a factor in that's common in both terms. Now, if the, the, the whole idea is to find the greatest common factor, in other words, all of the factors that I can find that is common in every term. In this case, it's just a two, so it's the greatest common factor. And what I'll do then is the opposite of distribution. In other words, this is the result of distributing two to x and to three. In other words, two gets taken, we often use the phrase taking out a common factor. So I take out two as a common factor, and that's almost like the opposite of distributing is taking, okay? So I'm taking out a common factor, and uh, what's left of the terms is x plus three. Now you'll always notice that when I take out a common factor, I'll have the same number of terms remaining inside my bracket. Okay, let me do a few more examples and uh, leave it at that. So let's say I've got something like x squared plus two x minus x y, okay? And uh, let's put in another thing here. Let's make this four, okay? So my first step would be to just write everything out in in its factors. So for example, two, uh, four would be two times two times x times x because there's two x's plus two would be just uh, two x would just be two times x minus x y would simply be um, minus x times y. Now, what do we have in common? Which factor do we have in common for every term? Here we have a 2 and there we have a 2, but the last term does not have a 2. Here we have an x and there we have an x, and the last term also has an x. Okay, So we know one of our factors at least is an x. Can we have another x as a common factor? So should it be x squared that we're distributing? Uh, well, here's another x but there's not another x in here. So I can only take out one x because that is uh, the greatest common factor, but we'll have to choose the, the, the term that has the least of them, and the least of them is, is one. Okay, so we can only take out one because it doesn't have more. So what am I left with? Here I'm left with two times two, so I've taken out this one, okay. So I'm scratching it out, it doesn't mean it's vanished, it just means I divided with it and it's now one. Okay, so it's actually one and one. So now I'm left with two times two times x, which is four x plus two times, this is just two, minus, and there's just one times y, which is negative, sorry, negative one times y, which is negative y. And there we go, This ha we've just factorized this expression, okay. One more example. Okay, let's take uh, something like 3ab plus 9a um, minus 3b. Okay, there's another example. And here, briefly, I can write it as 3 times a times b. 3 is already a prime number. This 9 can be 3 times 3 sorry that's not equal that should be plus three times three times a minus three times b okay the purpose of this one is to show you what happens if uh, sorry and let me add a uh, uh, b squared here let's add a b squared there uh, move this up a little bit Okay, so that we can write here b times b. Okay, uh, I wanted to show this example because what happens if I take away uh, all of the factors of a certain term? Remember what I said, there will always be the same number of terms left inside the bracket. So here we have three terms. Okay, so let's just see what happens if I take out an entire term. So here, what do we have in common? We have a three, three, and a three, and then we have an a, an a, no, we don't have A's. A's not common. Okay, so A's not coming out. Okay, then we have B's. We've got a B here, two B's there, but uh, since this one is only one, uh, the maximum I can take is one. Okay, and a B there. Great, so in the end, I'm taking out a 3B, okay, which means here, each term now actually gets divided with 3B. Now, if I divide this term with a 3B, the 3's cancel, 
and the B's cancel, so I'm left with A. This one divided by 3B, the 3's cancel, the B's cancel, and I'm left with 3AB plus 3AB. And this one, since I'm dividing with 3B, the 3's cancel, the B's cancel, but remember what we said, cancelling doesn't mean that they zero, it just means they divide into each other to give me 1. So I'm finally left with this negative 1 negative 1 and that leaves me with my final answer and here you can see we still have three terms be very careful this is not 0 otherwise we only had two terms it's actually negative 1 so that when I multiply this back in if I were to distribute the 3b again I would get my original expression at least okay so uh, that's that for greatest taking out the greatest common factor uh, there are more difficult examples and I think in the next video I'll look at some more challenging examples. See you.